Hello, my name is Tamo Nakahar. I run the uh, developer experience team at a company called Weaveworks. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully you've come because uh, you're joining our weekly Weave online user group. We've been doing these on Tuesdays this season. Uh, and today we're very excited to uh, introduce uh, kind of a project and technology called Firecube. If some of you are aware of um, Ignite that we've been uh, talking about over the last year or so, um, this is closely um, integrated with that and involves work that uh, we have done with Ignite. So we're very lucky today to have, we're actually kind of a few a full house. We have Mika here, who's one of our engineers who uh, will be presenting most of the talk and is hailing from Poland, right? And, um, and then we also have Mark Emes and Lee, both in Colorado, who will be here to um, answer any questions. Uh, you've probably seen them in some of our past talks, so hopefully they're familiar to you. If this is your first time coming to a Weave Online User Group, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll be sharing our calendar of events uh, that Stacy here, our community manager, has put together. So if any of them interest you, we hope to see you back. So a little bit about our company. So all of us work at a company called Weaveworks, and uh, we're a startup based now in London, San Francisco, Berlin, New York, Colorado, as well as with distributed teams. Um, we've been deeply working in the Kubernetes space, which I'll explain a little bit more. Um, if you've heard of the technology RabbitMQ, our CEO, CTO, and some of our engineers are the people who created RabbitMQ, uh, as well as the company around that. They sold that to VMware, and, and then they were doing different work in the Pivotal space until they saw clear needs in the container and the growing Kubernetes space, and then built the company uh, Weaveworks. Uh, we are VC funded by um, various VCs, including like Excel Partners, um, but one of them is also Google Ventures, which we kind of highlight given our involvement in the Kubernetes space. Uh, so, so much of what we've done is uh, based on open source. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, the Ignite project, if some of you know that, that's one of our most recent projects. Uh, going back in history, some of the ones that people probably know the most are WeaveNet, was our earliest one. That still today is one of the premier ways of networking your Kubernetes clusters. Uh, we also have Cortex, which is has been in the CNCF now for hmm, a year or two at least, um, and it is built on Prometheus and um, helps make it scalable in various ways. Uh, we also have Flux that most recently joined the CNCF as a sandbox project. Um, it does automated deployments, and um, if you've heard the term GitOps by now, um, it's a ter coin, uh, term that we coined based on our experience with Flux, and so it's kind of the GitOps uh, engine for Kubernetes. Um, we also have Weave Scope and many others. Um, you, you may know Weave Flagger, which is also one of our most recent ones that builds on service meshes and now sometimes not on service meshes to bring you um, like canary deployments, blue, green, AB. So this, all these um, uh, capabilities now kind of under the umbrella term of progressive delivery. Um, so there are many more, but hopefully you're uh, familiar with some of these. We also are a company and we do have paid products. Uh, and so our main one that we've had the most is called Weave Cloud. It is a SaaS product that helps you do uh, management, monitoring and automated deployments for your Kubernetes clusters. Uh, in some ways it is a hosted version of the Cortex scope and flux that I mentioned. Um, but of course, as a product, it integrates those much more and actually has added capabilities for like the canary deployments that I mentioned using Flagger. So that really takes it to the next level of GitOps where you're leveraging metrics from Prometheus slash Cortex to set up automated ways to um, do your canary or blue-green deployment. So there's various ways that you do that. That's our paid product. Um, so we've had that now at this point for over three years, actually four years. So we've been running that in production on Kubernetes on AWS. So having had, you know, being probably one of the only companies that can say it's been running Kubernetes in production for four years. Um, a lot of people who came to us looking at Weave Cloud also said, oh, <laughs> we need your help and we want to get started with our Kubernetes journey. So we're currently, some of the members on this team, are in the process of productizing the Kubernetes platform that we built to put Weave Cloud um, on AWS. And so that should be coming out pretty soon. And and of course, with all the GitOps uh, methodologies that really has taken off uh, since we coined the term, it is a very GitOps aware enterprise platform. So if you have any questions about that and where we're going with it, um, come and ask us. Uh, and since we do have our experience, of course, when people come and start using this, these products, they've asked for some consulting, training and support, which we are happy to offer. So uh, if you 
have come here the first time, our website is weave.works. Please check it out. If you have any questions, um, I'll be sending out an email after this and feel free to contact me if you are interested in any of those offerings. So a little bit of housekeeping. As I mentioned, um, Mikai will be presenting today on um, Firecube and uh, we have Mark and Lee here who um, uh, will be answering any questions uh, as part of that. Uh, the duration, if you haven't been to this before, you usually range like the shortest can be 30 minutes if there's like a short presentation and um, very few questions. I don't think that's ever happened though. We generally hover at about the 45 minute goal. Um, sometimes if there are still burning questions, we will go over time but have a hard, hard stop at 60 minutes. So usually these have still been about 45. Uh, and we're using a platform called Zoom. If this is your first time using Zoom, hopefully you can get familiar with it. Um, when we take questions, we will take them from the chat box. So if you haven't seen the chat box yet, please look for the button. If you can't find it, sometimes hitting escape gets you out of full screen mode in Zoom and you'll be able to see the uh, functionality, including the chat button. Uh, and a reminder, uh, when you do send your questions, please make sure you send it to everyone um, so that uh, we can all see your questions. And sometimes people even answer each other's questions. So also make sure that you choose to everyone in the chat box. Otherwise, you'll be answering someone's question and they won't be able to see it. So thanks for that. And now that we're done with the housekeeping, I will hand it over to Mikai. Let me know if you need for me to stop sharing. Tamo, mm -hmm. looks like I need you to stop sharing okay. because I'm not able to share. Mm, excellent. Hello, everyone. My name is Michał Flendrich. I'm a software engineer at WeWorks. Uh, uh, yeah, it's my first time I'm, I'm, I'm presenting at the WIF Online User Group, so, so I'm very excited to be here with you. Um, for a little introduction, uh, I'm a software engineer, as I said, uh, well, at WeWorks. I'm responsible for building our GitOps-centric products that allow you to run Kubernetes in a GitOps way. Uh, throughout the presentation, the term GitOps will appear several times. Uh, we'll discuss it a little more and, 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 and I'll hopefully show you some useful example. Uh, I'm a remote employee of WeWorks. Uh, I reside in Wrocław, Poland. Right now I'm visiting Berlin in Germany. Um, yeah, so before joining WeWorks, I was a, a platform architect at Eurobank, a retail bank located in Poland, uh, responsible for Kubernetes and enterprise application integration. Uh, one of the things I did was uh, introducing Kubernetes successfully in the bank bay, which is, which is a financial institution. Uh, previously, I worked as a software engineer at Google in Switzerland, building tools for developers, mostly centered around code, code coverage and automatic deployment. Um, today, I'll be talking about Firecube, our distribution of Kubernetes that runs a full-fledged Kubernetes cluster on a single PC um, and is useful for GitOps testing and development. So Firecube is a GitOps-enabled Kubernetes cluster running on your laptop. Mm, this is an open source tool that uh, we provide to you that you, uh, for you to use. Uh, one uh, important notion here is uh, the term GitOps, which means a way of doing infrastructure as code for the Kubernetes platform and applications. Uh, GitOps uses a remote Git repository as a single source of truth about what applications should be running, how they should be configured, uh, what they should be running on, and other things such as monitoring, alerting, rollouts, etc., which is um, provided by auxiliary tools and uh, offerings, including paid offerings of WeWorks. Uh, today, we're going to showcase GitOps using Firecube. So, Firecube comes with a Firecube Quick Start, that is a GitHub repository uh, ready to fork and get the running cluster from. Running Firecube, uh, running Firecube cluster is as simple as forking the repository and running the setup script that we provide inside. And this is enough to provide a Kubernetes cluster running on your machine, like, like on your laptop. Uh, and the cluster will react to any commit that adds or changes uh, any manifest, any Kubernetes manifest in the cluster, such as a deployment. Um, we'll now give uh, the second step, uh, the setup script, a little more attention. 
the Firekeep setup script that's included in the repository that you fork um, performs three steps. First, it creates a set of uh, lightweight VMs locally. Uh, we'll talk about these lightweight, lightweight VMs uh, in, the, in the following slides. Then it installs vanilla Kubernetes on these VMs. It's important to say that uh, we use kubeadmin, the upstream project, uh, to install Kubernetes, unlike um, other similar uh, tools that allow you to set up a Kubernetes cluster on your machine. Um, there's very little customization, so you get as close to upstream Kubernetes as you can, as you can get. Uh, and once the Kubernetes cluster is up, Firecube installs Flux, which is our provider of GitOps. Uh, we'll walk through that in more detail. So, Firecube performs a series of steps <coughs> under the hood that we'll walk through from the left to the right on this diagram. So first, Firecube starts from scratch by creating a cluster of VMs on the user's laptop. For this purpose, it uses Footloose, which is our open source project that manages lightweight VMs. On the Linux host that supports kernel-based uh, virtual machines or KVM for short, for example, a standard Ubuntu installed on any laptop, any modern laptop, essentially. Uh, Footloose uses uh, WeWorks Ignite as the backend to, to, to run VMs. For a quick introduction, we've Ignite is an open source uh, virtual machine manager with a container user experience and built-in GitOps management. Uh, we've Ignite was presented uh, during the last or second last uh, with online user group. The recording should be available. Mm. So Weave Ignite combines Firecracker micro VMs with uh, OCI images to unify containers and VMs. This wasn't secure because of Firecracker, which is an open source KVM implementation from Amazon AWS. that is optimized for high security, isolation, speed, and low, low resource consumption. Mm, this is a foundation of several offerings of AWS, such as Lambda and Fargate. Mm, because it allows uh, the VMs to be spun up nearly instantly well, so keeping users isolated by um, providing multi-tenancy. Mm, and benchmarks have proven to, that, that Ignite is capable of running about 4,000 micro VMs on the same host at once. Uh, one of the maintainers of Ignite's uh, leak, Billy, is on the call, so if you have any questions that are Ignite-specific, uh, uh, today's uh, webinar is a, is, a, is, a, is a great moment to, to ask such questions. There's a fallback option for non-KVM enabled Linux boxes and users of other operating systems that can run Docker and not KVM. In such case, Foodloose operates mm, in a mode in which it creates OCI containers assembling VMs. Uh, it means having system D, init, SSH, and other similar um, stuff that's usually um, available on a Linux virtual machine. Um, such pseudo VMs uh, support nested Docker demo and have a minimal resource footprint. Um, you can take a look at our Footloose repository on GitHub for further information, or don't hesitate to ask, ask us a question uh, here uh, by using the chat function if, if you'd like to know something more about Footloose, which is pretty cool. Uh, so, Footloose as a backend for uh, Firecube is um, stable for Linux and Mac OS and supports uh, for Windows is experimental. Um, we use uh, modern, uh, like like recently uh, recently added patches to the Windows services for Linux to kernel. Um, and that functionality is not uh, actively maintained at this moment, but we are actively working on it. <coughs> So as soon as Footloose creates VMs, our open source cluster API implementation called Whiskey Control, which, is, uh, which has been recently made uh, publicly available, uh, uses the declarative definition to spin up a Kubernetes cluster using kubeadmin. Uh, kubeadmin is the, 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 the upstream Kubernetes way to install cluster, uh, a vanilla Kubernetes cluster. And the first master node gets set up synchronously by Whiskey Control. Worker nodes and further masters are taken care of by an asynchronous controller for cluster API that's bundled with Whiskey Control. Once the Kubernetes cluster is up and running, Firecube enables GitOps in the cluster. Mm. From this point, Flux, uh, which is effectively a deployment running the cluster, uh, is our, being our GitOps operator, watches the Git repository for new commits and applies appropriate manifest changes in the cluster. Uh, do we have any questions so far? Uh, I don't think so, so far, no, we haven't mm -hmm. had any. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, is it possible? Uh, it is possible for, uh, for 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 everyone to try out Firecube uh, with GitOps right now. Uh, you just need to create a GitHub fork of our quick start repository. It can be public, and uh, run the setup script inside. Uh, on this slide, you can see. Uh, an example showcasing GitOps. You can just commit a new deployment, and after a few seconds, uh, it will show up as running in the cluster. And I'm going to demonstrate that. Um, for this, I need to share my terminal with you. Okay. Looks like you should be able to see my console window. Uh, so I'm going to start by. cloning our upstream uh, quicksort repository. Uh, we'll fork it by using hub, which is a, a GitHub uh, command line tool, which is specific to GitHub, but, but, but it should also work with GitLab or, or any other provider. So, What I have done now is I have cloned the uh, upstream quick start repository. I have created a fork in my uh, personal organization that uses my, user, my, my, my personal username. And now I have cloned the repository, um, which is my fork uh, to the directory called my fork. Should be able to, yeah, should be able to see it here. So, as promised, now I'm going to run the setup script. And as previously announced, this setup script uh, creates a set of virtual machines. This is happening right now. Uh, now it's about to start whiskey control that will install the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, this is an operation that takes a couple of minutes because um, it uses kube admin under the hood, which installs Kubernetes from scratch, including Downloading all the all the dependencies of the control plane and um, uh, kubelets, etc. Mm, this is an area in which we welcome mm, contributions to whiskey control. Uh, it's perfectly possible and and would be actually very useful to the community if we had a way to use uh, prepackaged uh, installed Kubernetes and would not need users to to repeat the step, which takes takes a moment to execute. Mm. As you can see on the screen now, there are some time-consuming operations happening now. For example, right now, uh, the operating system running on uh, one of our VMs, uh, it's being sent off in this particular case, is installing the Docker uh, package from the server image repository. So we'll take advantage of, 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 of this moment. Uh, I will show you the contents of the repository. So in the repo, uh, the most important thing at this moment is the cluster manifest. This manifest uh, is a Kubernetes object that follows the cluster API um, schema. Cluster API is uh, currently uh, uh, an actively developed uh, upstream uh, language to describe clusters. Uh, and whiskey control is one of possible means to spin up clusters that I defined using cluster API. <coughs> so in this case, you can see a basic, basic configuration of a cluster such as uh, IP cider blocks to be used by the cluster. Uh, some configuration details such as, for example, the uh, daemon.json for Docker that will mm, that allows customization of uh, Docker daemons running on machines in the cluster. This is useful, for example, if you have mm, a corporate setting where your Docker registry is using a self-signed certificate, and you need to allow Docker to uh, connect to to a repository with a custom certificate, for example. Mm. Apart from cluster that YAML, cluster API defines an error. Uh, type of object which is called machine and the machine in the cluster API context uh, 
represent a single machine being in the cluster. So you can say that there is a uh, one-to-many relationship between clusters and machine in the and machines in the cluster. So every machine is characterized by a name and essentially the uh, private and public IP address. So more, I can I can answer, uh, I can share more details about this. Um, if you have questions, otherwise, like you can refer to whiskey control documentation, and in any case, like you're welcome to to ask us. I mean, the the, the, the team of maintainers behind whiskey control for further information about uh, cluster API. So as you can see, this is finishing because uh, Cube Admin Init has already provisioned um, uh, the first machine, and now some final tasks are executing. So I think it will take around a minute more before we have a Kubernetes cluster that has an API that, that we can query. Okay, so I can see uh, some questions already. Actually, we do have a question, yeah. Uh Yes. Can you show us how to interact with the cluster? Oh, yes. Is, oh, I see the cluster coming up. Yes. Yeah, so maybe. this is uh, this is something I will show uh, immediately after this finishes. Um, once this command uh, completes, uh, it will show the location of the cube config that we can use to connect to the cluster. Um, and basically, by using the we we just use uh, kubectl dash dash cube config equals the path provided by this command and we can get nodes get all show the deployments running show namespaces everything this is the way to um, interact uh, with the cluster uh, read for, for reading whenever we want to um, apply anything in the cluster like create a namespace create a deployment or something uh, it would be against GitOps to do it manually on the cluster uh, the right way to do this is to create a git commit in the repository <laughs> instead. Um, I have uh, prepared an example where we will run a deployment in the cluster this way, and I will show it right away. Awesome. Great. Thanks for your questions. Okay. If you're, um, <clears throat> oh, go ahead. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So, uh, you should be able to see uh, that the command completed and it shows the location of the kube config. So uh, I just happen to be using fish not bash and this shows the instructions for bash. So the syntax for fish is slightly different. Like this. I have set the kube config uh, variable to point to the kube config. Yeah. So here, uh, we should be able to see that uh, we have connected to our cluster. There's already a bunch of things running inside, other than the usual uh, kube system stuff for kube DNS, kube, core DNS, kube proxy, etc. Mm, we have Flux running, actually not running yet because it's pending. It's uh, it has not yet started in the cluster after first you have to a good created. Uh, Flux is our GitOps operator that I described to you. This is responsible for um, pulling the, 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 the Git repository containing all the manifests and all the things that we want running in the cluster and applying to the cluster. Uh, I think if we look again, yes, it's almost running. Continue creating, okay. It must be the only images at this moment. Oh, okay, Fluxes. <coughs> okay, so it's uh, slowly downloading the images. It's okay. So uh, now I will show you how, so now that I have shown you how to uh, uh, see what's happening in the cluster, like see the deployments running, we can take a look at the list of nodes. So right now, only one node is present in the cluster, which is the master. As you saw in our machines.yaml, there are two nodes defined, one of them being the master, and 
the other one being the worker, and the master has been provisioned. The worker is, is being provisioned at this moment because this happens asynchronously, and uh, the WKS controller, which you can see here, is responsible for that. This is happening in the background. Um, what I'll show you now is how to create a deployment of the cluster. For this purpose, we will copy a file that I have created exactly for this purpose. This is a very simple deployment that just starts a uh, quad. Uh, some of you may know it if you have read the Kubernetes Up and Running book, which I uh, recommend, by the way, personally. Um, which uh, uh, so, 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 so Quart is a very simple uh, service that runs in the cluster and allows you to manipulate the liveness probe and redness probe of the pod it's running in. It's like, like a very, very good introduction to Kubernetes for for newcomers. Uh, so we have created this file. I'm going to add it to the index. And just make a commit. And push. Okay. So now we can take a look at what's happening in the cluster. Uh, I hope the font is not too small. Oh, we can see that Flux is still uh, taking some time to, to, to be set up. Okay, it has started up successfully. So in a few seconds, we should be able to see that a new deployment comes. Yes, here it is. So here is Quart deployment, the deployment that we have created. And we can see that it has uh, one replica. The replica has not been created yet because we should be able to see that Mm. Only one node in the cluster is uh, has been uh, provisioned until now. The other one is being created by the WKS controller. As I said previously, um, creation of every node in the cluster takes a couple of minutes at this moment, and this is a um, area for for improvement that we welcome contributions for. Um, so, do we have any questions until now? I mean. Uh, no, we don't have right now. Sure. Uh, okay, so... Oh, we do uh, have a question. Sorry. Um, Stacy. if you could copy paste for the group. Um, is there a way to see the underlying infrastructure, for example, the nodes, without kubectl get nodes? Yes. So, uh, the in, in this particular case, as, as you may remember from my presentation, uh, we are using Ignite as our backend. And Ignite has a command line interface that we can uh, use to, 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 to interact and to see the, the machines that we have. This is how we can see them. So this is Ignite specific. This has uh, nothing to do with uh, Firecube specifically. Uh, Ignite machines are managed by Ignite, and we use the Ignite command line interface to see the machines. Here we can see the name of the machine, the image that it's running from, the kernel, um, like, like size, CPU and memory, uh, like resource uh, configuration of the machine, IP address, and uh, we're also able to SSH into the machine if we happen to have a need to do so. And just one, one thing to add there, uh, is that Footloose uh, gives you the ability to insulate uh, between the actual infrastructure nodes that are running. So in this case, Mihao's running on uh, Linux, and so he's booting actual Ignite machines. If you were running on a Mac, it would boot uh, Docker VMs as machines uh, or Docker, Docker containers that are running a full image that we can then uh, use as nodes in the cluster. So, uh, so uh, that's it for the presentation uh, and the demo. Uh, you're welcome to try out um, Firecube using our uh, uh, our quick start from the repository. Uh, the repository is uh, WKS Quick Start Firecube cube with with dashes. Uh, it's located uh, in our we in our organization called WeWorks on GitHub. 
uh, if you have any questions, you're welcome to, to, to email us directly or create issues on GitHub. Mm, we very welcome contributions and, and feedback. Cool, excellent. Um, we have another question. Is it FireCube, it, oh, is it beta or is it stable, FireCube? So we have been successfully uh, using FireCube for development environments and for experiments. Uh, we so 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 we have considered so we have uh, released our uh, first versions a couple of weeks ago, so we consider it stable for now. Uh, it's recommended for use in uh, in, in, in in development and uh, for local usage uh, because of its nature. I mean, it runs a Kubernetes cluster on one machine. It's uh, more uh, suitable for development and for experiments than for production usage at this moment. We have not yet uh, considered this uh, uh, use, like, I mean, like, uh, we, we have not considered production the, the, the primary use case, but for uh, development and local usage, it should be just right. Cool. Um, and I sent a note uh, earlier earlier, uh, if anybody has like particular use cases or challenges that you have that you were hoping maybe Firecube would uh, solve, um, please share them here. We'd love to. Um, so um, I suppose we can get with three workers locally. Can we distribute these among our physical machines? Oh, that's something sure. And uh, <laughs> we were concerned because Mihai is using a Linux machine that once he's he might get. So <laughs> saying that, I, at least for me, his image is frozen. Is it just me? Oh, okay. Um, okay, you're here. Excellent. Um, yes. Uh, I, I don't know if you heard that question. Should I repeat it? Yes, please. Uh, yes, it says, um, I suppose we can get HA with three masters and over or two plus workers locally. Can we distribute these among several physical machines now, or is that something that's coming in the future? Um, so uh, the way uh, Firecube creates uh, virtual machines uh, is currently limited to a single machine. Uh, if uh, like it is it, 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 it is possible but not implemented to distribute that to multiple multiple machine this is an area where we could also welcome contributions excellent um, and, I, and I just want to add just uh, briefly about the question before that about uh, you know is it a beta or is it stable the one thing that firecube does is it builds on uh, several uh, open source projects that we're also using. We mentioned Ignite, we mentioned Footloose, uh, we mentioned WKS Cuddle. Uh, so all of those underneath there, and they'll have different varying uh, uh, levels of stability. But if you'll notice inside the setup script that Mihao uh, ran to create the cluster, uh, it actually calls out the, the pinned version. So if you do run into issues with some of the dependencies, you know you can you can go back and and change them uh, if if necessary. But yeah. So just wanted to add that. I'll add that um, if if you're really looking to try out multi-machine Firecube, there's nothing that's technically limiting it, as long as you're actually, uh, you just need to leverage the repos GitOps configurations for the infrastructure. So the infra layer and the Kubernetes layer are well separated. Um, and the infra layer is, defined in the repo with the cluster API set of objects. And it's a SSH uh, machine provider. And that uh, WKS Cuddle will just use whatever you provide it uh, for machines in the repository. Um, you could use like a newer version of Ignite with a CNI backend to distribute your virtual machines across a network. Uh, or set up your own Docker bridge routing uh, with proper subnets, and that would work. Excellent. Thanks for that. Yeah, and we'd love to, uh, if, if you get a chance to try that out or want to try it out, we'd love to hear about it, and you can post on our public uh, uh, Slack channel as well, because we'd love to hear, hear, you know, hear you know, how it worked for you. So that reminds me, uh, we still have some time. So if there are questions, um, here's our schedule, but here's also 
um, a link that we'll share in our email to our Slack channel if you have any uh, follow up questions after this. Uh, but we do have a question now. Um, so what are the main challenges that Firecube is trying to solve? <laughs> in fact, why have you put in all this time into this and all this effort? <laughs> Does one of you want to volunteer the first answer? Sure, I'll volunteer the first answer there. So what, so what we wanted to, uh, so we wanted to take a few different open source projects and put them all together in something that was a coherent thing that made the most sense. So, so we have Footloose uh, that, that uh, generates virtual machines as Docker containers and that's great for testing and everything. Uh, when Firecracker was announced by Amazon, we needed a, a different level of, uh, uh, management over those fire uh, those instances of firecracker and so we created ignite on top of that and then realized that could be plugged in with footloose together uh, we've been working on wks cuddle uh, for a while which as lee pointed out is an ssh get, uh, uh, cluster api implementation and so by pulling all three of those together uh, and illustrating the GitOps and the, and the uh, simplicity of GitOps and the, the power it provides you, we thought uh, this was a good way to illustrate that, uh, all pulling all those things together. So that's why we uh, put that together. So what it solves specifically in problems for us is, uh, you know, a rapid testing environment that we can use uh, to validate uh, our work that we're building on, uh, on a project that we're building here at uh, WeWorks called WWKP. So. Excellent. I hope that answered your question. Uh, any last questions or any last um, solution, uh, solutions that you're looking for for uh, actual challenges? If not, um, let's see, uh, another one. There's a recent uh, TJIK that's with a Joe uh, video on Ignite. Exactly. Yeah. So we had uh, him covering Ignite, the open source project that kind of led to this. Uh, oh, and they're highly recommending it, but it's an hour long, yeah, but totally worth it. Thanks for mentioning that. Yes, um, those TGIKs with Joe Beta are quite long. And uh, yes, he was excited about um, the Ignite project that um, led to this. So yeah, if you're looking for use cases, um, if you do know, you know, Ignite actually came from an actual use case, Lucas Kallstrom, that maybe you might know, who's you know, a big leader in the Kubernetes community and has um, been with us at Weaveworks, uh, had to go on military leave uh, because he lives in Finland and, and, and part of his work was to um, help them with the infrastructure layer that um, they're working on for some simulation software. And of course, being it from the Kubernetes mindset and having real world constraints around budget and you know, limitations, he was looking around for solutions, found Firecracker and thought that that would be um, something that would work, but then also realize, oh, you know, the user experience is not really um, helpful for, uh, you know, people from coming from a Kubernetes mindset and also there needed to be added capabilities. And that's what led to Ignite. He got um, um, approval to open source it. And so Lee and others on his team have um, jumped in and, you know, thanks to them to maintain and build that. Uh, and then we saw that there's this opportunity to have it connect with our product and, and that's what uh, Firecube is. So that's some of the background and some of the actual, you know, real life core of what led us on this journey. So we have an added question. Can you run this process on bare metal? Process. What, what is process in this case? If you're asking whether you can run Firecube on bare metal, then the answer is sure. This is what I did here. Yes. So Firecube on bare metal, yes. Uh, and maybe as part of that, yeah, do you need a V layer? Which is actually an interesting question given the background of Firecracker. Is that uh, required? Sorry, there was some, some, some connection interruption. Could you please repeat them all? Um, well, actually, so the question was, do you need a VM layer? And answered uh, actually mark answered just to us not to sorry everybody. i answered to the, you know, to the wrong it is group not required. yeah yeah <laughs> sorry about yes. that yeah Damn. yeah no it's but not yeah, required Mikhail, maybe we just... you can um answer like do, do, you, do you need go ahead one of you can answer yeah i was just gonna I, you know what I, what I put in there is it yeah it's the ssh provider so we just need the uh ssh endpoint accessible for wks cuddle in order to connect to it Cool. 
which just, uh, you know, Firecube is all about simplicity and uh, bringing machines up and down. And, and you know, as, as Michal mentioned, it's really important that it's an upstream version of Kubernetes. So uh, when you look at comparing it with Minikube or Kind or some of the other ones, right, you're going to get a, a, a fully self-contained environment, whereas what Firecube gives you is uh, basically an installation of Kubernetes uh, separated from that. So they're not bundled closely together, but it's all, it's upstream Kubernetes, so. And Lee also asked, um, it should be routable. Excellent. So with that, I think we're essentially at time. So I'll wrap it up. And thank you all for coming and your great questions. Uh, like I said, uh, or they said as well, um, if anything comes up later, you're trying this out, you have questions, uh, we will follow up with an email with these various links to our Slack channel. Um, we also have our uh, GitOps ebook if anybody's interested. Uh, and if this is your first time or if you don't remember that like we have these uh, weekly Weave online user groups and um, events, and sometimes we have special events, like uh, next week we'll have a, a special event on a, on a Wednesday. But generally we meet on Tuesday so um, the single source of truth for a calendar, the best place is our meetup group, the Weave user group. So please check that us out and come to future talks. If you have any suggestions or requests on different topics, uh, please feel free to reach out to me and we will do our best to fulfill those. We definitely want to uh, create these to uh, answer your questions and uh, help you get the information you're looking for. So thanks again to Miha and Mark and Lee and to Stacy and uh, thanks to all of you for joining. We'll see you next time. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye.